Well, Jeff, we're uh, about a week into camp. Uh, what do you what are you seeing from your team? Um, we've got an edge to us, both sides of the ball. I think it's the edgiest we've ever been since we've been here, which is exciting. We've had some very physical football teams, but um, of our four padded practices, I mean, three of them were game-like tempo. Um, yesterday, I was a little disappointed, but today was like a game. Uh, it was it was really fun to coach, and uh, you can tell we've got a lot of pride about ourselves. Uh, our culture's deep, and uh, got a bunch of guys that know how to win ball games and the correct way to do it. What's the story behind the deal we saw right after stretch today? A little GA one-on-one, it looks like. Oh, just some older guys trying to be young again, <laughs> <laughs> writing checks in their minds, their bodies can't cash. <laughs> Were, uh, was it full pads today for it the was. first time? What, what, what did you like about what you saw from them? Just again, the edge, just how physical we were. And our, our competing, you know, we try to compete with each other, not against each other. That's very hard to do. Yeah. You're trying to win every drill, but you don't want to destroy the other side because they're your teammates too. It's just, you know, we had some tempers flare up. It's, you know, good old school football out there. I, I felt like I was coaching a, a mature, tough football team today. But is all that pretty healthy in the end, kind of everything you just mentioned there, going through a, a, a fall camp? If you can control your emotions and stay healthy, it's it's the wonderful. It's just like I explained to them, it's always the fine line. It's a it's a balance as a head coach too, because you got to protect your guys. Uh, but you can't win games if you're not tough. Well, you're not going to be tough unless you do tough things. So it's 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 a it's a balancing act that that is uh, heavy on a lot of coaches uh, if they care about their kids. How much different is the evaluation process when you're in full pads as far as shells and shorts? How much better do you get a feel for what these guys really can do once they get these full pads on? I don't think there's any difference between shell and full pads personally. Uh, they hate wearing those knee pads and I've never really known what that little bitty knee pad on top of your kneecap really does. Uh, we don't cut anymore. We don't go low ever. So. The game, I could see the knee pad maybe taking to some, but in practice, we're just never down there. So even when we're in shell, you know, we've got on good quad pads, good butt pads, good, you know, shoulder pads and helmet. So I'm not sure there's much difference between shell and full. Um, historically, when I try to take care of my guys and it's helmets only, we blow the roof off on our GPS system of our Titan data of how hard we work on that day. So it's, 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 it's one of them things you're damned and you do, you're damned if you don't. Because believe it or not, when you go team settings, you got ones versus ones, twos versus twos, threes versus threes. So it looks like there's just an unlimited amount of football going on, but truly that one is only going 33% of the time. He's resting 66% of the time. So it, it minimizes how much they run. So the data goes up on their salt muscle tissue on the helmet only days versus shell and full where you're going more scrimmage, but then the physicality is up, right? I know that's a whole lot longer of an answer than you wanted for that no. short question. <laughs> Story of my life, right? <laughs> I know earlier in the week you mentioned potentially considering giving the guys off tomorrow, given how physical things have been. Have you decided how you want to handle tomorrow's session? Uh, we'll decide uh, tonight and uh, I'll get with those guys and we'll watch the video, and, you know, like, like all great parents and coaches do, when it's their idea, it's a lot better. And uh, we'll, we'll see what they think about practice. I, I'm pretty quick to not try to judge that until I come in. I'm, I'm leaning on the way I feel right now. There's a probably great chance that we're gonna reward those guys tomorrow. Uh, but if the video speaks differently, uh, we'll see how that handles itself. So uh, you guys are gonna scrimmage on Saturday. What do you expect to see from that? Uh, it'd be kind of like today, a lot of ones, twos, and threes. Uh, we'll move the ball more. Uh, we'll have some situations as well. Uh, we'll have officials. That's always nice because I, I hate being the official. You know, someone's always mad. I don't like being maybe mad at me. Uh, I go home and get that, right? Uh, so that would be it. The officials and, you know, we're having our alumni, you know, our former, our former players. And we've only been playing 13 years. So, you know, the oldest guy there would be probably 35. But, uh, are you, are you 35, JJ? How old are you, JJ? About your age, you and Greg's age. What, what does it mean to get those former players back in here? It's awesome. They're so proud. They're, they've enjoyed the ride. You know, I hired Parker Cundiff, who's on those original teams. And so I get to work with a guy that every day, 
similar when I had Kevin Brown working for me. They, they remind me when I'm just mad and down. We don't have this. We don't have that. And they, they remind me how far we've come. And then when I speak to those guys, they tell me about where they were. And it's just a good reminder of how far this program's escalated in the 13 year of playing ball. So I'm, I'm excited to see them. Well, a lot of them coach though. So they're busy on Saturday. So they'll, they'll text me and tell me they won't be able to be here. Uh, but that excites me too, because a lot of our former players are now coaches. And I know how proud they are of the program. They'll sneak out here more during the week, you know, so they can get away from their work more on Saturdays. You got scrimmage and stuff. Jeff, what would it mean to you to see Jamal Ligon and his career as the program's all-time tackles leader? I know that's in play for him. Um, you know, I don't keep up with that stuff very much. I tell y'all all the time, that's what's great about y'all, because y'all can always remind me of that stuff. I just think just because of the human that he is and what he has done and kind of his story, you know, he was a North Texas commit, and and we flipped him like in a day, and, and he was torn about that, really torn. And uh, it's just been a wonderful story ever since he started – he might have started his very first game. I'm not for sure of that, but it seems like he's been in the starting lineup as long as I've been here. You guys were about three weeks out from the start of the season. Have y'all kind of started looking to that, or is it still more of like a fall camp? We're peaking, there's no doubt. We're watching Kennesaw, but we're not working on them yet. We are working on the Roadrunners still. So, um, you know, that's, that's always a fine line, too. Of when, when do you start going scouts, and when do the threes quit going? And, you know, we'll we'll try to go another week probably, just working on the road runners. Then we'll go ones and twos and some scouts, and we'll start getting some Kennesaw looks. And get that's a really proud program. When you watch their video, you can tell they've been doing a lot of winning. They're going to be way better than you guys think they're going to be. It's because they're a lot like UTSA. You hadn't really heard of them a lot. A lot of people hadn't really heard of us until recently. You know, you look at what Sam Houston did last year, their first year up in FBS. I know their record was not real good. They played everybody tough, like one possession ball games. And I think when Kennesaw comes up to FBS, they'll be just like that. They'll be tough as nails, proud program, well coached, and uh, they're way better than I wanted to be. Jeff, we talked to Elliot Davis on Monday, and he talked about his connection with Jamal and how far they go back. Does that translate on the field at all, or did it help Elliot get settled in here? How have you seen that come into play? And, and Bryson. There's three of them that were all teammates together. All three played for my brother. So um, that's nice when those guys are coming in. They've been through the exact same culture. Similar pillars, similar thoughts, similar words. I'm sure they've heard way too many stories about the Trader brothers on the farm with, with our crazy father. And so, yeah, those kids are a blessing. They're just they're – just, they're instant day one leaders the moment they get here. And whoever hires them one day, they'll, they'll be hiring instant day one leaders the moment those guys walk in their jobs. Uh, Texas high school football practices for some, not all, started on Monday. Anything you ever miss five, six, seven years later about that? Um, unfortunately, it's been 10 years now, Benny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> crazy, but yes. Um, yeah, I do. Uh, there's something different about being a Texas high school football coach. Your, uh, your, your role's different uh, just because you take them on at such a younger age and you're dealing with not all very good players. As a matter of fact, most of them are not very good players. Uh, <laughs> so you're trying to make a lot of guys that aren't real good feel like they're really good and try to win ball games and keep your job and help them become men all at the same time. That was a fun experience, especially when we were there as long as we were, that we had them from kindergarten on. Because Mr. Albright and uh, they, I remember they were discussing like they were tired of handling the PE and PE. And I said, just let me let, let me become the PE director as well. And we started getting them from kindergarten on. So you had a real special relationship. Uh, like for example, Chris Boyd, who's now with the Houston Texans, probably on his seventh or eighth year. My mother was his pre-K teacher. My wife was his. Uh, elementary principal and I was his coach that whole time through so you can imagine how close you get to kids when you've been dealing with them literally since pre-k 10 years I forgot about your assistant (laughs) (laughs) I would like to make it only five or six (laughs) (laughs) my age would be about five years younger thank y'all thank you Jeff